In part one, we started with the basic definition of mass, which was what we have inside of us, the quantity of matter that you have. Turns out mass is slowing down of particles in nature, in a Higgs field. Can we say that, for example, the mass of a proton is equal to the mass of two up quarks and one down quark? And similarly, can we also say that the mass of a neutron is actually the sum of the mass of the up quark and two down quarks? Can we say that? Logically, we should. But... Now, scientists have been able to determine the mass of a proton and a neutron. And also, scientists have been able to determine the mass of an up quark and a down quark. So, here is the math. Let's do the math. The mass of an up quark in terms of kilograms is about 4.17 into 10 to the power minus 30 kilograms. The mass of a down quark is about 9.08 times 10 to the power minus 30 kilograms. So, a proton is made of two up quarks and one down quark. So that means the mass of two up quarks is about 8.34 times 10 to the power minus 30 kilograms. And plus the mass of a down quark, which is 9.08 into 10 to the power minus 30 kilograms. If you add them up, it all comes down to about 1.742 times 10 to the power minus 29 kilograms. Fair enough. But there's a problem here because the mass of an actual proton is about 1.66 times 10 to the power minus 27 kilograms. But the combined mass of these two up quarks and one down quark is 1.7 times 10 to the power minus 29 kilograms. So if you do the math, you'll find that basically the combined mass of the up quarks and down quarks in a proton is only 1% of the total mass. So, the question then arises, where does the rest 99% of the mass come from? So basically, we can say that only about 1% of the mass of a proton is accounted for by the Higgs field. So where does the rest 99% mass come from? And that's where our old guy, Mr. Albert Einstein comes to help. We all know Einstein's most famous equation. Actually, the most famous equation in all of science is E equals mc squared. Now, what is E? E is energy. And m is the mass. C is the speed of light. So, E equals mc squared. We all know that. So, that means m equals E by c squared. So, that's where you can actually, this is what you call mass energy equivalence so what is mass according to einstein's special theory of relativity that he discovered in 1905 mass is nothing but energy stored in something so the 99 percent of the mass of the proton actually comes from the energy that's stored in massless particles called gluons So what are gluons? Well, basically glue. Glue is something that binds things together, isn't it? And uh, scientists are not very good at naming things, so they actually named gluons after this property of the glue to bind things together. Now remember, the up quarks and down quarks, they are in a very confined space, very limited space. But how are they bound together? Well, they are bound together not by the force of gravity, not by any other force, but actually a very different kind of force which is called the strong nuclear force. What's a strong nuclear force? Well, a strong nuclear force is a force that only works in a very teeny tiny distance, very small spaces. So it only works at the level of the scale of up and down quarks. It works in a very very small space gap and 
it's it binds the up quarks and down quarks together what are gluons let's keep it simple gluons you can think of as particles that keep on moving from up quarks and down quarks and keeps them together keeps them bounded together now there's a whole theory of quantum chromodynamics that explains the detailed interactions of gluons and the strong nuclear forces inside of a proton or a neutron but we are not going into those details the basic idea is to make it visually possible for you to imagine what things are like in the center in the stomach uh, of a proton or neutron so basically gluons are these massless particles that keep on traveling from the up quarks and down quarks in pairs and they actually have a lot of energy and their energy is responsible for the mass because remember according to einstein's theory e equals mc squared and hence m equals e over c squared so this energy that these gluons carry with them to bind the up and down quarks together is responsible for 99 percent of the mass of a proton or for example a neutron isn't that amazing? It's not the absolute mass, but the energy that keeps the up and down quarks bound together in such a small space. Strong nuclear force is responsible for 99% of the mass of a proton or a neutron. So once these gluons are locked up into this, this three sets of up and down quarks, their energy, this extreme energy that these gluons carry then actually translates into 99% of the mass of the proton or neutron. So basically 1% of your mass is because of the mass of electrons and up quarks and down quarks. The rest 99% of your mass is basically the energy that you have inside because of the gluons in the protons and neutrons of the atoms in your body. So basically mass is not something that's already inherent in things, it's not something that matter has, but rather mass is something that quantum fields do. It's basically a behavior of matter in quantum fields. Isn't that amazing? So that was today's video. Thank you for watching and as always please like and share this video as much as you can and if you really like this video please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, bye bye.